here's the timeline of the history of genetics. Beginning with the work of Gregor Mendel, we have reached this point. The experiment which proved that it's DNA which is the genetic material. Clearly, the next step would be to understand the structure of DNA. So, how is this biomolecule structured? What are its constituent molecules? Let's find that out in this video. The structure of the DNA molecule was discovered in the early years of 1950s. Note that the structure was discovered, not the molecule. The discovery of DNA molecules predates to the 18th century. But DNA was ignored for a long time and it was proteins that grabbed a lot of attention. However, post Griffith's transformation experiment, the other two notable works in the timeline helped shift the focus towards DNA. So around the early years of 1950s, an English chemist named Rosalind Franklin started working on DNA molecules. She isolated the DNA crystals and shone X-rays on them. As a result, she obtained fine images of the structure of the DNA molecules. According to sources, the best one looked somewhat like this. Around the same time, Francis Crick and James Watson, two scientists in the field of genetics, worked on the structure of DNA and reached a similar conclusion like Franklin did. However, according to sources, they were fortunate to receive better and earlier recognition compared to Franklin. They even shared a Nobel Prize with Morris Wilkins for the discovery of the double helical structure of DNA. So let's understand how exactly this double helical structure looks. We may have come across the structure of DNA somewhere. Is this how it really looks? Yes. According to Franklin, Watson and Crick, the DNA is made up of three major components. One is a pentose sugar molecule called deoxyribose. How is this obtained? It's obtained by removing one oxygen atom from a ribose molecule. Does the name deoxyribonucleic acid. The second component is phosphate group. This helps bind the two deoxyribose molecules together. The third and the fifth carbon atoms of the adjacent deoxyribose molecules are bound by the phosphate groups. Lastly, the nitrogenous base forms the core of the double helix. These are four different molecules that bind in pairs. Two of them are called purines and the other two are called pyrimidines Adenine and guanine are the two purines which bond with the pyrimidines, thymine and cytosine. Can any purine bind with any pyrimidine? Nope. It's a thumb rule that adenine always binds with thymine, while guanine binds with cytosine only. These molecules are bound to each other with the help of hydrogen bonds. Adenine binds with thymine with the help of two hydrogen bonds. Guanine and cytosine, however, bind with three hydrogen bonds. Did you know that one unit consisting of deoxyribose molecule, one nitrogenous base and a phosphate group is called a nucleotide? And what if the phosphate group is removed from this nucleotide unit? It's called a nucleoside then. Nora wants to know if there's any way of measuring a DNA molecule. What about its dimensions? Watch the next part to know more. The dimensions of DNA are very simple and easy to remember. The diameter of the double helix is around 2 nanometers. The double helical strand has one major and one minor groove that makes up one turn. The length of one turn is around 3.4 nanometers. And there are around 10 base pairs in one turn. Now can you help me with the distance between the two adjacent base pairs? It's simple. The distance is 0.34 nanometers. It's simply 3.4 divided by 10. This is how the molecules are arranged. 
So in this double helix, this portion is the backbone, which is made up of the deoxyribose molecules and the phosphate groups. Whereas this portion that forms the core is made up of the nitrogenous bases. Now, can you guess the chemical nature of DNA? Since it contains nitrogenous bases, you would say that DNA is basic in nature, right? But that's not true. DNA is in fact acidic in nature. The presence of phosphate groups makes the molecule acidic in nature. What about its physical appearance? Can you tell me how long can this double helix be? Let me tell you an interesting fact. If all the DNA from a single cell is pulled out and stretched, then it would touch approximately 2 meters in length. Yes, it's that long. But if the DNA stretch is so long, then how does it fit into such a tiny nucleus? We know that a cell is extremely tiny and the nucleus occupies a very small portion of the tiny cell. So how does such a long stretch of DNA fit into such a tiny space? The answer is quite simple. How do we fit a long telephone wire in a small space? That's right, using the process of coiling. Similarly, coiling the DNA helps reduce its volume and fits it into the tiny nucleus. But what does it coil around? Is there any support for the structure? Or does the long stretch coil around itself? Well, there are highly specialized proteins that help us in this. These are called the histone proteins. A total of five histone proteins help in the wrapping of the DNA molecule. Histone proteins namely H1, H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 serve this purpose. Among these, the H2A, H2B, H3 and H4 come in doubles to form a ball-like structure which looks somewhat like this. The stretch of DNA then easily wraps around this octomer formed. And what function does the H1 serve? Basically, the H1 protein helps in attaching the DNA to the octomer and keeping it intact on place. In other words, it helps to hold the complete structure. This unit of the DNA string wrapped on the histone core is called nucleosome. Does this structure resemble something? It does. It looks like a bead having a string wound around it. That is the reason why the nucleosomes are referred to as the beads on a string structures. Any idea what kind of a structure is obtained from this? This kind of coiling forms the basic unit for the formation of the chromatin structure. Yes, we know that chromatin and thus the chromosomes are made up of DNA. So it is this pattern of arrangement of the DNA that forms coils and helps in the formation of the chromatin structure.